Get what you missed on Pearl Overdrive. Today we were asking ourselves, what is the strangest thing you've ever heard or come across about something or someone who was not not something, someone looking for money? What is the strangest thing you've ever heard of how somebody was or looked for money? And whew, there are many, isn't it? Many, many strange things that people do. And I love the way, uh, you know, other than the way we were having the discourse that said that it is sometimes people do insane things or <laughs> it's it's insane things that sane people do to get money insane things that sane people do to get money first timothy chapter 6 verse 10 says this for the love of money is the root of all evil right which will which which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows Right, and, and I can go on. I can. This is self-explanatory. Looking at things like gambling and uh, you know pyramid schemes and get-rich-quick schemes. I can go on and on and on, isn't it? And even the wash-wash that we know. Yeah. Now, did you know that there are a lot of sayings and expressions that many associate with scripture when in fact they're not? Allow me to tell you now, allow me to wear my pastoral hat and tell you as a pastor that these are fallacies. Number one, cleanliness is next to godliness. Nope. Not in the Bible. You can Google. Prove me wrong. Be like the Berean church. Look for a scripture that says cleanliness is next to godliness. There's nothing like that. Or God helps those who help themselves. Not there. Not there either. But the most misquoted non-scripture has to be the saying, money is the root of all evil. And even unfortunately get some pastors who say that money is the root of all evil. They misquote 1 Timothy 6.10. The Bible doesn't say that at all. What the Bible does say is the love of money is the root of all sorts of evil. In other words, money is neither good nor bad. Like I said again, we need money to pay rent and uh, commodity and, and just things to move around, even to do ministry. You need money, isn't it? It's our relationship with money that God's interested in. Why? God knows that money can hold a lot of power in our lives, if we let it, that is. We all know that money is necessary for survival and that it can be used for incredible good. But at the same time, we can become so consumed with accumulating money that we ignore the people and relationships in our lives. It can become a kind of idol, like Julie said. For others, in the pursuit of measuring up and keeping up with the Joneses or with society, we can become enslaved to money as we spend more than we earn. Our anxiety and stress grow in pace with our debt. That's why God's uh, interest, God's in, in, is interested in our attitude towards money, how we acquire it, spend it, and where wealth ranks in our list of priorities. That's what God is interested in. God says we need to sort out our priorities. Who will we love more, God or money? God's warning is there. To love money more than God can bring a lot of unnecessary grief into our lives. And once again, I say, money is not evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. Don't we all know a story where the love of pursuit of money led to the downfall of a leader, of a company, or a family? I know. We can even mention some off of our fingers. Fingertips, I mean. Perhaps you're trying to recover from some poor financial choices yourself right now. Be careful to not let the love of money take over your life. After all, God allows us to be the caretakers of what he provides, including our money. Let us master money. Don't let money master you. So love God first and manage his money second. It, it's his. He owns a cattle in a thousand hills. All silver and gold belongs to him. He says, I will do these things and see if I will not open the very windows of heaven. Test me in these things, isn't it? So all silver and gold is his. So love God first and manage his money second it's not your money it's god's money isn't it so let's pray that god allows us to manage his money well <laughs> amen right just like i said about fire fire is a good servant but a very unforgiving master yeah and so is money let's pray father we thank you that truly the entrance of your word brings light 
and it it gives delight to the simple and so lord even as we have heard may we continue looking up to you where money is concerned because it is many a struggle where even some of my fellow pastors parents you know uh, young people uh, the pursuit of this thing called money has brought so many down including churches including governments including families and individuals ruined completely but how i pray that may we seek first your kingdom and his righteousness and then all these things be added unto us according to your riches and glory father be exalted keep us tonight when we meet again tomorrow all praise glory and honor returns to you for those of us who are in need of healing spread your healing hand over us in jesus name i pray amen and amen amen and amen Join Joe Stow and Joe Anik on Peril Overdrive. Weekdays from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m.